Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Kevin Wong and I'm the webinar producer intern here at TechSoup. Today's webinar is minimizing board process to ma maximize progress, the secret recipe to nonprofit governance. Next slide. It's a little housekeeping. Um, today we are in webinar form. So if you have a question, you please put it in the Q&A down below, looking on your screen, and we will get to your question as soon as we can and as soon as we see it. I'd like to turn it over to Trent, who will go about today's webinar. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Aretha. I appreciate that and look forward to the webinar. Um, I've been with, uh, my name is Trent Wright. I'm the account executive for Onboard and Passageways. I've been with the company for six years. Um, coming as previously as a newspaper editor for 20 years. Um, I started our nonprofit uh, division, selling them on my own. Uh, my wife is the president and CEO of a nonprofit. So uh, she really gave me a lot of guidance there on how to deal with nonprofits. I've been on uh, several nonprofit boards. Um, I've sold, I sell nonprofits every day and work with TechSoup, which is a, a great partner for onboard um, and with onboard to nonprofits. Um, I also have uh, Sheldon Himmelfarb uh, with us today. He is the president and CEO at Peace Tech Lab, where he and his team use the power of technology, data, and media to save lives and promote peace around the world. Prior to this, he served as a foreign policy advisor to a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the head of North American Documentary Development for Yorkshire TV, and the CEO and executive pro producer for Common Ground Productions, the media division of Search for Common Ground. He is an award-winning filmmaker, former commentator for the National Public Radio, Sunday Morning Edition, and author of numerous articles on politics, pop culture, and conflict. He has managed peacebuilding programs and numerous conflicts, including Bosnia, Iraq, Angolia, uh, Messiadania, and Burmania and received the Capital Area Peacemaker Award for uh, American University. He is also a valued onboard uh, customer. Thanks, Sheldon, for being uh, with us here today. Pleasure, Trent. Um, so we're gonna start off with just a poll question to kind of get a better understanding of who is joining us this afternoon. Um, so we're gonna start with that poll question and then uh, we'll go from there. Um, and just really, uh, which title best describes your role? Are you an executive assistant or administrator, executive or management, or board or committee member? Just to give us a better idea of those on the call. And, and this is going to be interactive. We're going to have three or four different questions throughout the uh, webinar. So we encourage you to be active and uh, participate. It just helps us understand what parts of the solution to show you and what to talk about. Okay, great. Um, looks like executive management or, and then uh, board member committee, and then the lastly is assistant and administrator. Okay, so um, as we go in here, before we get into on, the onboard platform and onboard for nonprofits, we wanted to discuss nonprofit governance with Sheldon. Um, with, basically what is required for government success, governance success, and what issues traditionally hinder governance success and the real world impact nonprofits are able to make. Um, so Sheldon, when we start talking, you know, outside of budget, the most common consideration for all nonprofits when it comes to government is either budget, but also then the limited staff and limited time. So Sheldon, can you provide some insight? Our, around governance challenges that you faced in the nonprofit space in the past? Sure, Trent, I'm happy to. Um, and yeah, you've already hit on the, the top hot button issues, the budget, of course, the limited resources you have to deal with it, bandwidth, everybody's always running towards this side of the boat or that side of the boat because of the latest crises, especially in our business where we work in conflict zones around the world and what we're working on can be determined by what is in the news that day. But just from a purely governance perspective, I would say um, we struggle with the fact that 
our board members are in different time zones, different countries around the world. Um, and that presents obvious challenges. Um, and second of all, I guess I would say something every nonprofit struggles with, which is just the different kinds of board members you get. You know, some board members are asking for their pre-reads three days in advance. Other board members don't look at them until you tee it up the day of the event. And so you need a certain amount of flexibility. I like to, I have to say, I think of boards very similarly to I, the way I think of um, foundations and funders like that, which is they all want you to be agile, fleet of foot, but at the same time, they, at the exact same time, they want you to be buttoned down, have your processes in place. And so, you know, meeting both of those um, masters can be a challenge. Yeah, most definitely. Now, what are some ways that Onboard has helped mitigate or solve some of those pain points or, you know, running in both directions, if you will, for you and uh, Peace Tech Lab? Well, I can't overemphasize what it meant to show to the board that we were investing in a platform to really get the governance issues um, out of the way so that we could talk substance mm -hmm. on our board calls, we could talk programs, and we weren't spending a lot of unnecessary time flapping around. Did you receive this? Did you receive that? Where is it? Where can I find it? Oh, I don't know why you didn't get it and, and so forth. Um, so Onboard really did help us solve some of those key process issues. We upload it as long as we, meaning my staff and myself, as long as we're doing our job, the board members um, know now it's their job to meet us halfway and find the documents where we've put them. I mean, we, we you know, make sure they know where they are and they, they take it upon themselves to, um, uh, to really manage the process from their end. Mm -hmm. So my point, Trent, is that by investing in the platform, we really shared responsibility with the board. They took it upon themselves to um, meet us. They recognized we're making this expenditure. Of course, they approved the expenditure, but they recognized we're making a, a commitment. We're making a commitment of funds and of our limited bandwidth. And so it really helped to get them to be um, uh, responsive when it came to these kinds of processes. Yeah. And having everything in a single source of truth with which was on board is, um, you know, and having it because you, you didn't talk about this, but the time factor for your board members, they want to simplify that time that they have to dedicate to your group. Um, board members can use an iPad, iPhone, Surface, Droid, or Kindle Fire to look at your documents with on board. And, and that limited time that they have, we just make it easier, onboard makes it easier for them to digest the information that you're providing them. Yeah, I, I didn't get into any of the bells and whistles of the platform yeah. itself and the flexibility uh, that it provides, but 100% what you just said, they know um, where to get these documents. It is such a flexible platform that it can um, uh, be, you know, it, it, it suits, each of the different tastes of the board members. Um, and it, it also is secure. That's the other thing. My, our board was increasingly concerned about the security aspects mm -hmm. uh, uh, across the last couple of years. And Onboard helped enormously with, with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So when we think about the secret recipe to nonprofit governance, the kind of solution that nonprofits required to maximize their impact, they need a platform that is going to make their systems, procedures, and staff more efficient, as well as maximizing uh, director engagement, extracting their experience, skills, 
and expertise to help move that organization forward is really what you know, I think both of us are trying to, are saying, but at the same time, I think Onboard does. Um, before we go into the solution, I, I'd like to go briefly through a couple slides to give you a little background of what, who we are here at, you know, Passageways and Onboard. Um, so we've been around 19 years, got our start in the financial vertical, banks and credit unions, and then have really expanded from there. Uh, higher education, we are the preferred provider for AGB, um, also healthcare associations, and then we have a great partnership with TechSoup. Um, most of everything I sell now is through TechSoup, which is great. Um, we're 100% integrated with Zoom. So it just means that you don't have to open up Zoom on another tab. It opens up within the solution, within Onboard. We're a Microsoft partner, so you're not PDF every, everything before you load it into the solution, which is really nice. We really want to take everything on the right-hand side of your screen and simplify it down to our solution, again, to be that single source of truth. Um, for admins, it's going to simplify that process. It's going to make it easier for you to load the information, share that information with your board members, and then from a board member's perspective, you're going to be able to access it across any device at any time. Uh, you know, we really kind of simplify what we're trying to do in our solution. And some of the benefits, you know, that board engagement, um, simplifying board communication, again, an effective board meeting management, and then best in the class security that you hit on, where our security is Microsoft Azure, the same as the uh, Department of Defense. So um, we're good there. We've had no breaches in the 19 years we've been in business. We also have, our, uh, we're SOC 2 Type 2 certified, which uh, I think we're the only group that is SOC 2 Type 2 certified. And then really, you know, we talked about some of the partners that we do keep. Um, we're just very, Onboard is very intuitive and easy to use for even that, what we like to call that seasoned board member, that older board member that is somewhat technology adverse. We're very easy to use. Um, and you're going to have a team working with you as you go through this. So it's once you buy, we're not just going to turn you loose. You're going to have an implementation manager. You'll have a customer success manager. And then we also have 24-7 customer support. And again, I don't go away as well. Um, the, the key takeaway on this slide is we host over 500 meetings per day. So if you have a question, either a governance question or a how, just kind of any kind, kind of how-to question, we can answer that with like-size organizations. Okay, so let's go to the solution itself. Um, looking here, this is the homepage or the dashboard. And we're gonna jump right in uh, to the meeting. But before we do that, I wanna just point out that you, know, you can post announcements. Uh, this dashboard is unique to each board member. So we can configure that dashboard uh, for them making it easier to show them where to go. This toolbar on the left-hand side does collapse and expand. Um, if we go into our meetings, if I go into this third quarter board meeting, board members will get an email uh, for the meeting. Uh, we integrate with all calendars, but also you can get a push notification to your device. So we can enter a couple of different ways they would enter. And once they're in, they can join Zoom. Zoom will open up, like I mentioned, in the lower right-hand corner. Now, if I take my picture off the main Zoom, I can join here and have my picture here as well. Um, but you can't, I can, my picture can't be in both spots. So um, we'll do that, we'll keep that running. And then board members can see their agenda with each line item. But instead of opening up each individual line item, they can come in and just click open book. And the book is a, a compilation of all their documents for their meeting. So now in two click, or actually three clicks to join the meeting, open Zoom, and then open book, you're gonna have everything right in front of you, which is really nice. Now, I'm gonna click on this report of compensation committee. Within that document, I can now put my notes and annotations on the document. Those notes and annotations are unique to only me, but I can share them and that is a multiple click response, but I can share them with other people in the meeting to get some of that operational minutia out of the way and off, you know, 
off our plates before the meeting starts. So that way we can focus on strategic, strategic conversation, which is really what we want to have. We want to leverage your board members' experience and expertise to have strategic conversations. Now, as a side note, I can hide notes and annotations. I can search by notes and annotations. If I want to jump to a different section of the board book, if I want everyone to jump to this report of quarterly operating results, we can do that. We can also just say, hey, let's go to page 53. And at the bottom there, we can jump to page 53. So there's multiple ways to get through your board book. But again, it's going to open up all on the same tab. It's not opening multiple tabs. Now, a couple of things that I really want to highlight is the fact that we have engagement analytics. So we can see not only get meeting feedback from your board members, but we can see what parts of your board book your board members are looking at. And we're going to look at this from a positive and a positive stance. First, I can see that corporate strategy and business development update. My board members have gone to that a bunch. I look at that every time when I'm in a meeting like this, but we're going to say they've looked at it a bunch. So I know that that's not going to be a two or three minute section. That's going to be a longer section that's going to require more information. My board members have questions on that. And as an executive director, I can be prepared and have additional information ready to talk about for that section. Also, I can see that I have a litigation update in this board book, and I can see that no one has looked at the litigation update. So as I go through, I know that my board members haven't seen that. So I can go back, I can go all the way back to my calendar or to my dashboard, and I can post an announcement about the litigation update to my board members. That way they are made aware that there's a litigation update. I can say, hey, I need you to look at this, be ready to discuss it. A real life example, my wife is the president and CEO of an economic development group. And she was selling a building. They were signing the purchase agreement, $3.7 million on Friday morning. This is about two months ago. They were having a leadership meeting or executive team me meeting Thursday to discuss the contract. Wednesday night, none of her board members had looked at it. She had gone into onboard, gone into her meeting details and seen that no one had looked at it. So she posted that announcement saying, hey, fools, I need you to look at this before our board meeting. And that way they could get in and look at it and have an understanding. And again, that is in analytics. So we're more than just, you know, a meeting tool. We're a, an engagement and we're going to see what parts of your board member or what board members are doing that heavy lifting for you. Now, we'll also look in, in the meeting. I can also go in my meeting and we can take your meeting minutes. So we can simplify that process for the poor soul that's taking your meeting minutes. So we can go in and we can do that either from scratch or from a copy of the agenda. You can take attendance, you can come in and each line item, you can add a note, a motion or a task. So we can really simplify that process from the beginning. But then if we, when we save and finish, we can also have options to send for review, create an approval, add the meeting minutes to resource, to the resource folder or finalize those minutes along with the ability to download them as a PDF or a Word document. So that's that's going to really, Onboard really helps with that. And when we talk about, you know, your meeting minutes, when you're doing that, board members are great at volunteering to handle tasks or to do different situations or handle different situations. Um, we can now create a task for them a new task and we can go in and we can name the task, put a due date and a time, a description, and then the board members can keep us up to date on how that is going. And not only board members, but staff members can do that as well. So, and then we can assign that task and add the documentation to it. So that's, you know, with onboard, we can really simplify that part of the, the board process. And then one other thing that I'd like to show you real quick is the fact that in our directory, we'll have everyone's contact information in, and you can have as many groups or committees or subcommittees as you'd like, which really, because we're permissions-based, we can then um, give a board member that's maybe just in charge of that audit committee, we can give them 
the ability to create meetings, add resources uh, for the, just the audit committee, but we also have the ability to look at roles and terms. So we, the solution can help you keep all the roles and terms. We can get rid of that ugly Excel spreadsheet that is floating around your office and replace that with onboard and keep all everyone's roles and terms within the solution. So there's a little there's a couple high level things from a productivity standpoint that onboard not only meeting minutes builder, engagement analytics and task management with roles and terms can really help simplify the process and cut down some of that uh, you know executive leadership uh, minutia that you're doing on a, a meeting to meeting basis. Um, Sheldon, from your perspective, um, with meeting minutes builder or engagement analytics, have you had a, the opportunity to use either one of those? And can, can you express, you know, the, the value that the, the, the solution provides with those two? Sections? You know, Trent, when I watch you do this demo, I just realize how many things we don't take advantage of and should. There's no question about it. But I guess um, I would just add that what, I, what we have found is that as we, when, when if and when we need a feature, mm -hmm. we have found it a seamless interaction with um, the customer service folks mm -hmm. for one board. That, that's been a big help for it. We're a small organization. And, and as I said at the outset, bandwidth is a big issue. But when we do want to explore one board, we absolutely have found a willing and very helpful partner. So no, we haven't used these features, but boy, I'm, I'm, I'm probably when we get off here, I'm gonna task somebody on the team to start exploring some more with the, with your folks. Yeah, and one thing, and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, a lot of this, we received a hundred million dollars in new funding last summer. So uh, we continue to add new features about every four to six weeks. And a couple of these are newer features. Uh, one feature that is that has been with onboard uh, since the beginning is our resource folder, a great place for policies, procedures, bylaws, meeting minutes. Uh, again, this is all permissions based. So we're able to permission either at a folder level or at a document level, um, just as a great one stop shop again with all your board members uh, or your board materials. Um, and again, we can have this be either for the leadership team or your different groups or committees. It's really nice. Um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF are native, but we can also put photos, videos, or links if you in the resource center. So if you hold an event and a board member can't be there, you can either put that video or pictures in the resource center so that way they feel closer to the day-to-day. I know board members aren't supposed to be in the operational operational side of uh, the nonprofit, but if they can, if a big meeting's going on, my wife likes to put uh, pictures of her meeting minutes from big meetings. That way, board members don't have to guess or wait till the next board meeting to hear how that board meeting or that meeting went. They can, she can just post those materials in the solution that way. Um, now, when you talk about, you know, being a small nonprofit, Sheldon, um, how was it for you guys getting up and running? I know we have training and we get a lot of accolades for being very easy to use. How did your board members think um, the onboarding, if you will, of onboard went from your guys' perspective? Oh, I think the... I know the board members were very happy with that. They, they told us they were very happy with that. They appreciated that we had made this investment and they were, um, they, they, they were easy to onboard. We, on the other hand, our own team, we were actually at a moment of, of uh, transition in operational um, folks on the team. Um, and so, you know, that was a bit of a challenge of getting our own folks up to speed. Um, but, as I said earlier, we've had great handholding um, from your end and, and it really wasn't problematic. But I was worried about that because we had a transition right before a board meeting of the um, operations person that would be working with me on 
you know, making sure everything was uploaded to OneBoard, making sure all the members had access. And it, it really was, it really went seamlessly. Great, great. And I know from my perspective, I offer, when I sign a new group, I offer board member training. Um, 80% of our board members don't need it, but I do offer it um, to really because I want 100% user adoption. I know board members are on two or three other boards. So I want that horizontal expansion is my kind of my goal. Well, I, all of our board members had it, Trent. Well, great. All of our board members had um, uh, training from your folks. Great. Great. And uh, we had a question from Chris asking if uh, do we fully integrate with Google Workspace for nonprofits. Again, in, in the resource folder, you can add, you know, links, Google links there. Um, you can also um, put them in the, the resource center and then you can PDF uh, documents then for the um, calendar or for your meeting. Um, I also had another question. Is there a way in, in the directory from Christine? Sorry. Um, is there a way in the directory to input skills or competencies, competencies, experience, demographics uh, that board members have so that we can see gaps? So it, back in the directory, and it's something that we have, it's skills, skills tracking. We can definitely do that within the solution. Um, I actually need to get my skills tracking turned on. So I apologize, or I would show you that, but we can definitely do that. Um, and that, that's a newer feature. And I'll, I'll go into that here in a second when we talk about um, the different setups or the different price points for onboard um, because we have uh, different starting points. It's not really one size fits all. Okay, um, we'll get back to the solution. I'll show you a little bit more here in a little bit, but let's go back to my slide deck. And because we were talking about it, sorry, you can see my two kids or two of my three kids. Um, so with TechSoup, we we have three packages. We have uh, better, best, or good, better, and best. Uh, essentials, premium, ultimate. The essentials you get thirty percent off with the TechSoup discount, and then the other two you get forty percent off with your TechSoup, TechSoup discount. Um, when we look at when we look at it, um, please one second. Uh, essentials is very robust. Um, it's everything you need to start making board meetings more effective. Uh, plus, it has that uh, our security of Microsoft Azure. We can create, maintain, and share all board materials in a central location. Uh, we can make sure that board your board always has access to uh, the most up-to-date materials. Um, and again, we get that calendar integration, annotations that I showed, uh, Zoom integration. Um, 30% off with TechSoup. And I'll be real frank, I mostly, um, Essentials and Premium are the two that I sell the most of. Uh, premium, we get some of the, the tools that we talked about today, the meeting uh, meeting minutes builder, task management, the and then voting and approvals, surveys, e-signatures. We can vote on things either between meetings or during a meeting. Um, and then you get additional training and support and then the dedicated customer success manager. And then with the ultimate, we get single sign-on, DNO questionnaires, as we talked about skills tracking, and then board assessment. And uh, those things are a pretty high level for nonprofits, especially, especially smaller nonprofits, but I am seeing more and more of the skills tracking and the board assessments being used uh, for, for nonprofits. Um, when we look at, you know, the bang for your buck, uh, when it comes to the TechSoup discount, uh, essentials, normally list price starts at $300 per year. Uh, TechSoup pricing gets, goes down to $210. Premium, $600 annually per user. Uh, with TechSoup, it's $360. And then ultimate, $800 per user, list price, and then with your TechSoup discount gets it down to 480. And then when we look a little bit deeper um, with essentials, again, uh, the enterprise security, as far as Microsoft Azure, agenda and board book builder, like you can use this across any device. Again, that Zoom and calendar integration, the resource library, the homepage or dashboard, what I call the single source of truth, 
the ability to share, mark up and share your notes and annotations on your board book. Uh, we can search within the solution and you can do an advanced search, um, searching the entire solution or searching just in the resources or your meeting. Uh, again, meeting feedback, groups, user groups and permissions. And then one, one feature that I really like is being able to disable downloads and printing from uh, your resources or from the uh, calendar or your board book. And I'll look here, we've got a couple. What is a security, uh, Pearl asks, what is the security solution to the membership directory? Um, from a, if I get your question correctly, I think you're asking if we can dis, um, you know what, Pearl, I'll come back to this because I wanna show you that and I'll, I'll come back to this. Um, is this, I had another question, is this per user per board member accessing the platform? Yes, it's just per user, not necessarily per board member. So if I go back here, uh, so if a you have a staff member, that staff member would also come in at that price. Now, I, what I'm gonna tell you is if you have 100 board members and staff member or you know your number is 100 i'm not going to we're not going to charge you 210 per person we're going to be flexible with that we're going to find out you know what committee members you have or you know how often they're going to meet we're going to be very flexible with some of that pricing um, and charge some of those folks who don't maybe don't use the solution as much a different rate we will we will help you and prorate those because you know we don't want to price you out by the number of users that you have um, and again, um, does the per user mean per board member? It's it's just per user. It's whom everyone is counted the same in the solution. Um, and then we have a question: Does everyone have the same level of users or, or, or premium packaging? Um, if I want ultimate, can the rest of the team have essentials? Everyone else, everyone is the same within your within your organization. So if one if you need the ultimate, it would be for the whole organization and not just uh, one person. Okay, um, going to the premium. So Chris asked, uh, three staff members, twelve board members, fifteen licenses. Yes, that's what you would then be charged for fifteen. Um, what was what you would get? Okay, um, the premium package, you get all the essentials capabilities, again, with meeting minutes builders, shared annotations, task management, voting and approvals, surveys, e-signatures, a guided implementation, and then a de dedicated customer success manager. Um, available add-ons, we can add on an a la carte, the single sign-on, DNO, skills tracking and board assessment, which are featured then in the ultimate. Um, so. Okay, um, as we go through here, let's, let me move this here so I can get a better sense um, how we are on time. So we are pretty close uh, for our survey in the Q&A part of the, the uh, webinar. Um, so before we get into that, how do you request the TechScoop discount? You, can, you must be a TechScoop member. You can go to Onboard for Nonprofits page. Um, on TechSoup's website and submit your requests, or you can email us directly at TechSoup at onboardmeetings.com. Um, and then the uh, subscription is a one year access. Um, and then we're also um, getting really close, I think, um, to announcing a year integration or year partnership with BoardSource. Um, and board source, you know, is great with our governance, with governance material. Um, and, and it's going to really help um, give a little more teeth to the solution. Um, and onboard users will have access to seven board source resources directly in the onboard platform at no additional cost. This is new uh, in our continued effort to go beyond selling software that will make your board meetings more effective and efficient but also help your directors grow, expand their knowledge and skills so that it can better serve your board and other boards that they may serve on. 
we're very excited to announce this feature in the very near future. And that's something our customers are excited to get their hands on. So board source uh, will be coming very soon for us. Okay, so um, you're gonna get a quick survey. We'd love to get your feedback. Um, I have a couple questions. I will now open this up to Q and A. Um, go ahead and put your questions in the solution for Sheldon and I, or in Zoom for Sheldon and I. And then, um, and then the first question comes from John. Can you give us an, a quick explanation on the integration with Zoom and how hard it is to use Microsoft Teams? So the integration with Zoom is very easy. As I showed, it would open up in the lower right-hand corner. We can go into settings and go into features. And this is where we can integrate Zoom. It's very easy to add that in. Now, Microsoft Teams, we're working with Teams to get that integrated. But if I go back to my meeting, and I can go to any meeting here. If I go to my Rhode Island meeting, I can then set up the remote meeting and I can add the Teams information in here as well. So it's very easy to add Teams. Um, it would open up, Teams would open up on another tab because we're not yet integrated, but you can put all your Teams information in so that way your board members have access to it. Great question. Uh, David asked, uh, when we have a new board, they get a personal sign-on to use. When they leave board, the agency, we are able to disable their access. So if we add folks in the solution, we can go in and add them individually or with a CSV import, uh, to in, add them individually. It's just first name, last name, email address. Their email is their user ID, so that's important. And then if when they, we can go in and when they leave, we can either reactivate or deactivate and it's very easy to do that. Um, we can also delete, but if you delete, then you're deleting their, their, the roles and terms, and we'd like to keep that history there. So let's just deactivate them. So it's very easy to deactivate them. Uh, Brittany asked, is there a minimum number of required users? No, I, I sold a group that had three users, and then I've also sold um, groups that have hundreds. Um, you know, I have a group that has almost 400 folks in it. So, um, you know, we can go as small as you need and then as also as big as you need. Uh, the smallest, I, I, I've sold the solution to one person before. Um, it makes it very easy. Um, Emily wants to know if there is someone who can reach out to us, a private demo. Most definitely, um, we'll get that set up and you can talk to me and we can get that done. Um, Christine asks, is this, is, a, is this for a US-based organizations only? Nope. Um, we have organizations, we sell throughout the world. So we have uh, staff in Canada, Australia, and Great Britain. Um, and we're also, we have some resellers in the Middle East as well in Africa. So we, we really sell throughout the world and the solution is used throughout the, uh, throughout the world. Um, do you have a board term tracking feature? Yep, that's in roles and terms. So we can go in and keep track of your board members. And again, get rid of that ugly Excel spreadsheet that's floating around um, floating around your office. Okay, look in here, seeing if there's any more. Uh, is there a place for all current and past board meeting minutes and documents that are saved? Yep, that would be the resource folder. Again, policies, procedures, bylaws, and meeting minutes. Um, great question, David. Um, and again, we can permission this at a document or at a folder level. So I can go in and I can go permission at a member or a group level as well, uh, which is really nice. So I don't have to remember all the members of the fine fundraising committee. I can just go to the groups and set that up there. Uh, Is this suitable for, for nonprofit boards? Oh, yes. I, I sold uh, over 120 uh, nonprofit boards last year myself. Um, I started selling on board to nonprofits four years ago by myself. And now I think we have like 12 folks selling to nonprofits. So um, it's our highest growth level um, or growth sector that we sell to, again, we got our start in the financial vertical, but we're selling to more nonprofits than anyone else. Or, and, and we also we also do for-profit as well, yes. 
Um, we have, you know, for-profit boards as well. Um, Sheila asked, how does this solution compare to Zek? I don't know Zek. I'm sorry to say, I, again, I've been in the space for six years and I don't know Zek. Um, okay, let's look here. Uh, Emily asked, is there a way to track board members who have accepted and plan on attending a meeting? Yes, we can. We have an RSVP feature in the solution. So if I jump in to the Rhode Island meeting again, I can RSVP. I'm attending, I'm attending remotely, I'm tentative or I'm not attending. And then as we go in, we can see who their RSVP status is. So we can see this, I just created this meeting for that group when I met with them. And I think they're signing tomorrow, but um, you can track then their RSVP attendance. Okay. Just looking through to see if I have any new questions in the chat. Uh, does it send reminders for RSVPs? Yes, you'll get an invitation. You can either get an email reminder or again, a push notification to your device. Uh, personally, I would like to get no more, uh, <laughs> no more email so we can get uh, reminders, push notification reminders. Um, can you explain the training you provide for board members? So um, yes. We can do it a couple of different ways. We can train either before a meeting, during a meeting. I really like to have trainings a couple of times throughout a day or two. So like say, if I'm gonna train your board tomorrow, I would do a training at 8.30 in the morning, 12.30 and then 4.30 in the afternoon. That way board members can jump in whenever they would like. Um, and that way they're not, it gives them more options just to be real honest um, that way. Um, we can, uh, you know, we can, we can train them at their leisure. Um, I've even done tra trainings in the evening for board members. Um, with our customer, our customer support and our uh, integrate implementation team, they can train either like that or they can train before or during a board meeting. Um, if our organization dissolves, is there a, uh, Sydney asks, if the organization dissolves, is there a way to download all the information stored? If so, how difficult is to access after download? Um, you would download it in its native form. So we would help you migrate that information off. We do not want to be in the document management business. Um, so we would help you migrate that, in, that information off and it, it is very easy to get it out of there. You use MailChimp to make announcements to 300 members. Do you have MailChimp integration? Well, we have all, we integrate with all emails, but I'm not, I don't know exactly about MailChimp. Um, Pearl, let me, I can follow up with you on that um, to find out. Um, that's the first time I've, I, I guess I've thought about that, but that would be, I, I would need to know. I, I don't know for sure, Mail or uh, Pearl, about MailChimp. So. Um, let me get uh, let me get some more information for you. Okay, we're coming up on uh, the end of our webinar. Are any other questions or concerns, thoughts or comments? Um, Sheila asks, how have you approached board members who do not want to use the solution and want to continue to use their current systems? Um, <laughs> great, great question, um, Sheila. Uh, my wife had a board member that said no they weren't gonna do this. So when I was doing their training and I did their training in person, but um, about 10 minutes into using the solution, uh, they saw how easy it was to use a solution. And, and they sheepishly asked for me to come over and help them download the app. Because we have an app for every device, it's very easy. Um, we can, if we're looking at it, we can download or print documents for them, um, but the solution is so easy. Um, that that most of the time we don't have that issue. Um, but again, that training, that personalized training really helps them. Um, so, okay, well, 
Sheldon, I really appreciate your time. I probably should have used you more than I did. I apologize. Um, Aretha, I pre appreciate you as well uh, and TechSoup and the partnership with Onboard and TechSoup. And uh, I look forward to, to hearing back from you folks. And again, please complete that survey so we have a better idea who would like to get additional information. And uh, until the next TechSoup, TechSoup webinar, we really appreciate your time and have a great day and we'll talk again.